studying the relationship between insect pollinators, primarily bumblebees, but also butterflies, and also the flowering plants that they pollinate. Right now in the lab, the focus is on, we're trying to understand mental flexibility in uh, bumblebees. Their world is constantly changing, nectar levels constantly changing, and there's a lot of competition for these resources. You know, there are thousands of species of bee, there are butterflies, flies, all these things are trying to get the nectar and pollen that the bees are. We use a variety of experimental approaches to study mental flexibility. We have uh, behavioral experiments. These behavioral experiments are done either in the lab, or we have uh, semi-natural experiments that we conduct in the greenhouse, and then we have uh, field experiments that we um, conduct in um, natural areas. We're studying mental flexibility by using what's called a task switching paradigm. So subjects are given two tasks and they're asked to perform each task randomly an equal number of times. They have a color discrimination task and an odor discrimination task. We train the bees to each one of the tasks and then we give them both tasks together and we see what the bees do. Do they switch between tasks or do they tend to focus on one task or the other? And it turns out that bees like humans tend to repeat tasks. They don't switch back and forth. We're studying the neural basis of this mental flexibility at one level, but we're also interested in the consequences of mental flexibility for the ecology and evolution of flowering plants. Currently, there is an unprecedented decline in bees and other pollinators around the world. I don't think people realize 30% of what they're eating comes from a bee, and if you remove bees from the system, there's going to be a major problem in terms of the food supply. I think. A lot of people would be surprised to know that the small bee that they're afraid of and that they're trying to get rid of plays such an important role in their lives.